The Crit Show contains elements of horror, fantasy violence, and adult language. Content warnings can be found in the episode description. up literally tomorrow if you're listening to this the day that it comes out uh we are doing live stream for the cure over at twitch.tv slash live stream for the cure and uh we have uh, the last three years done a one page rpg we've had a good time uh the crew always shows up in force our time slot is 8 p.m eastern um we're going to continue that trend we're going to play another one page rpg i thought we'd just make the characters right now excellent so well, yeah, everybody roll a d6. Oh, okay. What are we? We don't even know, we don't even know the game. Oh I know. <laughs> you'll you'll find out. We're gonna we're gonna get the characters and then you'll. But learn. how do I know which dice to roll? I don't know what the theme is. Oh, roll your What's most neutral dice. Uh, the mm, chaotic. Ooh. I'm rolling my cheese die. Perfect. Just one d6. Just one. Okay. I got a four. I got a five. I got a one. Uh-huh. I got a six. Perfect. Okay, so Jake, you are a demon of pride. Uh, your traits. Okay, but what about the game, though? <laughs> <laughs> your traits are corruption, deception, destruction. One, two, one. Tass, you are a demon of sloth. Your corruption is two. Your deception is one. Your destruction is zero. Kim, what was yours? Five. You are a demon of wrath. Your corruption is zero. Your deception is zero. Your destruction is three. And Megan, you were a six. Yep. Come on, demon of lust. Demon of Envy. Ah, damn. Envious. Yeah, of, I'm so jealous. Of <laughs> not being a demon of lust. <laughs> <Not. laughs> uh, your corruption is one. Your deception is three. Your destruction is zero. All right, so give me another D6 roll. Okay. Another five. All right, Kim, you are an elemental. So an elemental of wrath. That's your nice. That's your look. I got a one. You are an insect of envy. You Your look is insectoid. I got a two. You're a goblin of pride. <laughs> <laughs> uh, four. Uh, you are a, <laughs> you are bestial. You are beast of sloth. So perhaps just a sloth <laughs> Maybe of sloth. just a sloth. Yeah. <laughs> please, uh, please, please, please. Uh, all right. And now I need you to roll a D10. This is going to be for the hideous magic that you know. <laughs> Hold on. I have to leave my closet because I was not prepared to have a D10 today. <laughs> yeah. One moment. Seven. Jake, your hideous magic is the barbed wind. I got a six. Yours is torrent of filth. <laughs> Love that album. <laughs> yeah. I got a three. Yours is maddening visions. Ooh, okay. Okay, I'm back. What are we rolling for? Uh, uh, a D10. Uh, a nine. Burning blood. <laughs> that fits for me. Yeah. So we are playing... The alternate version of The Witch is Dead, which is what we played the very first year, we're playing a game that uh, we're all a little familiar with. We're playing Little Helpers. Yay! yay. Oh, yay! You're a demon. Not one of the big ones. You're a demonic familiar, bound by powerful magics to help the most evil and depraved wizards in history. You're a foot tall, a twisted mockery of God's creation, and you're ready to get evil. Except, while well, your new mistress you've got, she seems a bit... Nice. She's barely evil at all. I mean, there must have been some mix-up at the occult library, and out there somewhere, a gaunt-eyed necromancer must be using enhanced rabbits to help him out with his blood rituals. Anyway, you're stuck helping her and trying to avoid looking evil until she, you know, dies. That's the breaks. <laughs> so, in this game, uh, your, your master... Who is your master here, do we think? Who summoned you? The... Owner of a cupcake shop. Perfect. And uh, on, we'll find this out the day of, uh, but she's got some some possible tasks she's going to ask you to do, and you've got to do them the only way you can, but she doesn't want to know that that's how you're doing it. you got to make it look as unevil as possible, but everything you do is, is just, it's kind of evil. They might be asking you to find a mystery date for the harvest dance. They might ask you to uh, clean the house before... Someone comes to inspect it or maybe even secure and deliver a special package. Who knows what those events will hold. If you want to find out, you can join us over at twitch.tv slash livestream for the cure on Thursday. And then I know that they will send us that clip and we will post that on YouTube uh, after it comes down from Twitch in the near future. So we hope to see you there. 
And with that, it's time to get into the episode. Siobhan and her crews have gotten to work on freeing one of the ships that helps to spin the city of Plankton. You know, it'll be around a week for them to be able to liberate it and fix it back up to be seaworthy without the supports of the uh, docks that it was built into. She also has a crew of people working on freeing the IPT crews. It's a um, nice flame-kissed hull and <laughs> the flames make it go faster. Yeah, exactly. Especially down. <laughs> um, so, you know, it wasn't completely destroyed in the fall, but it was wrecked pretty bad. So they are essentially explaining how they have to sort of take it apart in chunks and they're going to have to put it back together in the water at the edge of the city. And that's why it's going to take most of that two weeks. So, you know, you'll have your ship back. After that two weeks, but it seems like, uh, in theory, you'll all be long gone by then and be able to recall it to you. Um, so for this sort of loner ship to get done, you got about a week. So there are downtime moves you could be doing while you're waiting. I know some of you have some special moves and so on. So what's uh, going on over this week? Uh, I'm going to start writing a new book. Oh, excellent. What do you think you're going to write it about? I think it would be really beneficial to have it be something like a healing book, right? Like oh. so something that I can use to like read and provide health like in the moment. Because like we have like healing salves that we can use, but this is that's kind of like a, you know, it, it's an ointment that takes time right. to like heal, like something that can like boost you in the moment. Um, so I think it's a book of like, like daily affirmations. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. Okay. Are you just like writing this in your hospital bed as you're getting healed being like this sucks. I wish it were faster. Yeah, I'm like I'm like it's like talking to plants to make them grow better and like feel loved and I'm just like being healed from this poison and I'm just like writing and I'm like these are nice things that I think about me. And then I'm like writing them <laughs> about like all my friends too and like Aww. this is what I like about Kim. This is what's great about Jake. Landar is cool. I don't really know her, but <laughs> this is what seems neat about her. Um, so when we're like fighting or if anybody gets hurt, I can just flip to that page and just be like, these are some nice thoughts that I have about you. And it'll heal them by making them feel better. Okay. So a book of healing. I think this is a two-parter, but I think one part of it's here. I think the first one um I'm I'm already gonna butcher how this question is, but like something that you have to experience. I, I think maybe you're working with cotton and going down into Dr. White's lab, you know, that y'all had kind of wrecked and looking through his notes and some of his magical spells and so on, and essentially finding a bit of the magic, like the recipe for necromancy and reversing it. You're finding that recipe that you can invert for the sake of healing. But I think you can do that over this week. Just spending that time with him, you you can get that piece pretty handily. Um, I think in doing so, you realize that to finish the book, it needs to be made from something that has healing properties itself, something natural. And Cotton says he knows exactly what would be potent enough, if you can find it, would be the discarded scales of a seaborn that they shed their scales naturally, they heal faster than most people. And so if you could cover the book in those, that would complete this for you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get the scoop. Okay. And uh, also, you know, having checked off a uh, target for death, I do now get either dark knowledge, a dubious gift, or I clear all my black marks. Um, I've already taken learn dark knowledge, so I think I want to receive a dubious gift over the course of this week. All right. Before we roll your get the scoop then, I think actually it's just some random point in your walking around that you take a step and you are in front of this world's death again. I've brought you here to give a gift and an offer as you prepare to take out your next target. Go on. One of the massive skeletal tentacles sort of unfurls in front of you and lying on the tip in what is... A human hand that is the, the tip of this tentacle. There's a black nail. You are a traveler of worlds. You are not from the place that your compatriots are from. I can smell the death of other worlds on you. 
I know you are not long for this world, for it would not be natural for you to stay here. And for your good works, I offer you this nail. You may activate this nail once by inserting it into your flesh. When you do so, the death of the world you're in will not be able to find you. Even if you die once, the nail will dissipate and give you life again. It will only work once. And what's the offer? I understand that you and your team will leave soon, that this is your desire, and because this is your desire, it is the only reason you are not on my list. But this world has something looming in it, a great darkness that's spreading. If you stay for a time when your team leaves, I offer you the gift of 99 souls. If you hunt down 99 souls that should not remain and eliminate them on my behalf, when you do depart this world, no death in any world will be able to find you. You can still die, but the worlds you shouldn't go to, you will not be hunted. If you couldn't have sensed to me, if you couldn't have found me, you couldn't have pulled me into your service, could you? No. Deal. There's like a long pause and the skeletal tentacles seem to sway thoughtfully. I was even going to give you until you left to answer. The fact that you have that ability is the whole reason my answer is so quick. You're right, I do travel a lot of worlds, and I'm tired of death calling every time I enter one. But I want to go back first. I won't close the portal, maybe a half hour. I don't know where I'll go from here, so I want to grab a few things and say goodbye to a few people. This is acceptable. Also, the nail, it is yours to use or to give. And you are back in mid-stride in Plankton. Let's see Rolling getting the scoop over this week. All right, so with my vinegar, that's A3. Oh! (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Maybe in a town full of necromancy, they're kind of put out by a vaguely undead person trying to ask questions. (laughs) Oh, well, that is possible. That's good, yeah. Um, What was the question you were asking around about? I was trying to get information about Pepper Anson, which is super unfortunate. I could change it. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I mean, honestly, I do think that is part of it. Also, though, a bit of this, I think you have now some context for after having spoken to Cotton a little bit about uh, the few times he's met with Nash and the small entourage that he's brought along. Like Cotton was the only one that had much information about them. He's the only one that met with them specifically. Obviously, probably Dr. White did too, but can't really ask him. So however Nash was coming and going with his group, he was staying discreet. Nobody saw these people or interacted with them in this location. Um, So just people are giving you looks like, who the hell are you talking about? Nobody knows a goddamn thing. But if you want, you can still take a trouble to ask one. Maybe there was someone that listened in on something or saw something. Yeah, I'll take a trouble. Hot damn. We'll discuss what that is in a moment. What do you want to know? I think I want to know, you know, there's something, Pepper Anson is like the first vampire here. So I don't know if that means that she is particularly dangerous or they just haven't had anything like that on this world. So what are the hidden dangers if I confront Pepper Anson head on? Because so far, these have been pretty... There's the thing, let's kill it. Um, But she is something unusual in this world. Like, we've faced unusual things in this world, but not entirely unusual to the world itself. Absolutely. I think you find, like, this little pub, and there's a a little corner of some sailors that were, you know, fighting alongside Siobhan. And they're the only ones that this sparks something in them. They're, they're, um, you know, getting possible descriptions and stuff from what Cotton has told you. Um, For context, she seems to be this small, agile little form of a woman. And the vibe is almost more mummy-esque in that she mostly wears these black wrappings, these um, thin cloth that just covers her body crisscrossing, and like a large scarf, like a shroud around her, her neck and her mouth. They insist that they absolutely saw her work, and that they are brave soldiers and brave sailors and they left they got the fuck out of there because they watched her hunting so so they say what they saw 
was one of the alleyways between the buildings somebody had turned down, and it seemed odd that this alley was filled with these black cloths hanging down, like just draped through this alleyway, just dozens and dozens of them, like they had to push their way through them. And that one of the cloths grabbed onto someone and pulled them up, seemingly into the sky. They heard a shriek and then nothing, and they never saw that person again. Some of them tried to get out. One or two were taken as well, and they only barely saw her form moving through at any point, like for a moment. And so the idea of hitting her head on, she seems tricksy. She seems like she is employing magic somehow, whether it's illusionary or she has some control over what she wears. Yeah, she is more of a huntress than a fighter. And she sets traps. Yes. Okay. So a trouble. I want to call this Hunter versus Hunter. Mm. Because... It's a good manga. <laughs> you know, Landaret is a hunter, a fighter herself. So I think there's this idea of... I, I don't want to necessarily say pride. I'm not going to uh, pigeonhole you with that. But something to that effect of like... The idea that Landara can do it better. Hmm. So I think what this is going to do, there's no um, you know, stat differences or anything for you, but I think this is going to open up a compulsion for me to be able to see those moments when Landara can do this hunt and it doesn't really matter what else is going on. Like that is the priority over yeah. maybe Malia or helping the crew or whatever, um, that that is something that will will be hanging over her to get in the first strike in this hunt. Okay. Um, to clear it, you have to do something. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, Landara, like, eat the sandwich. I'm uh, cleared. I, I did it. so much better now. I did something. What, um, <laughs> Sometimes you're just really hungry. <laughs> what was the, like, this is not exactly obsessed, but what was your clear condition before, Kim, for obsessed? Uh, make a strategic mistake. So if this is kind of, the, it's not like the opposite of obsessed, but it is aware that the other person might also be super focused on you. Could a clear condition be kind of like a, like a, like a positive thing? Like you have one up to them. You have, you know, like she sets up a trap. I spot it and I keep the group out of it. Ooh. Or like, like a, yeah, like a one upsmanship or something like that. Yeah. Like if you, you do good hunting to her or avoid her good hunting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like that. And that it like sticks around if I fall into one of her traps or maybe even exacerbates. Yeah, I dig that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. All right. Kim, are you up to anything? Uh, hey, Megan, are you feeling better? Are you starting to feel less poisoned? Because I've got an idea for your liver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How would you like some different kind of poison? <laughs> because if you're feeling better, I think uh, you and I should try to see what's fun to do around here before we go deal with maybe another dangerous, terrifying thing. Hell yeah. Where's the where's the party district in Yeah. Party? <laughs> it's everywhere now. Like so much of this stuff is just burnt out and destroyed. So I mean honestly, I think the people that are left, some of the first steps for them are making sure that the pubs are good and finding just the fun spots to rebuild so that they can get some sort of normalcy and peace for a little bit. Celebrate celebrate freedom yeah i love that and this might help you write your book because you know what not thinking about it will help you write it better when you're thinking about it later <laughs> uh i would like to carouse please absolutely i don't believe we have rolled this one yet so let's read it when you carouse and make merry during downtime spend one treasure and roll plus polish on a hit mark three luck on a 10 plus, tell the fates whether you made strange new friends or caught wind of an interesting opportunity. On a miss, mark one luck, but you overindulge in your weakness and you mark your playbook's vice. Yay, uh, that is a eight. So I'm gonna spend a treasure. And my question for you, because mm. I'm I'm getting something out of this because uh, when I carouse with my soulmates, I can spend a point of bond, which I'm going to do right now, to clear one of my troubles. So I'm nice. going to go ahead and clear Restless uh, because, you know what, J Jara is a lovely woman, but I'm about to leave town. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> 
You see, most people that goes the other way. They're yeah, trying I was gonna harder. Say. <laughs> no, I got to I got to refocus my priorities. I almost saw Megan die. So. Yeah. Oh, very that's all very noble and I love it. Okay. But my next question for you is I already have the most luck I can have right now. Uh since Megan's participating in the carousing with me, can she take the three luck? That's fucking adorable. Aww. Yes. Yep. So mark three luck and I will clear one of my troubles. Well done. Well done, everybody. Thank you. This is You're just welcome. A, good, a good party night. Uh, yeah. I'm feeling, I'm feeling really good about what we're about to do here. <laughs> You're going to feel terrible in the morning. <laughs> I imagine Siobhan is out with you all and just giving everybody way too many drinks. <laughs> Jake, what are you up to this week? Uh, I'm going to tinker. Oh, okay. What are you going to work on? My boy mask. <laughs> Go on. Uh, I I think I've got a little bit of like residual magic left from kind of like pulling it into this world that I want to try and impart into this mask. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So we haven't read this one yet either, I don't believe. So the downtime move, Tinker. When you tinker with something using your tools during downtime, roll plus vinegar. On a hit, spend a treasure to create an object with two tags of your choice and one flaw of the fate's choice, or you repair an object to good working order. On a seven to nine, you just choose one. On a 10 plus, you choose two from a list that can do a couple of things. So we'll, we'll see how the roll goes first. Okay. 10. Hell yeah. So you get to choose two. So you can either choose an additional tag to add to your item. It doesn't cost a treasure to complete, or it doesn't have a flaw of my choice. Any two. All right. So the tags that I want to add to the mask are strange. Uh, thus releasing the residual magic I have left into it. Nice. And aid polish. Um, so what I'm trying to do to this thing is make it more realistic, like that I will, I will pass better as a real human child that it like looks, it's like one of the fucking mission impossible masks. Yeah. <laughs> like it's got an articulated mouth and like, it will make me genuinely look like a kid. I love it. That's awesome. Okay. That's weird because I hate it. I'm so uneasy. <laughs> so <laughs> spooky. Um, so my picks from the list will be uh, it doesn't cost a treasure to complete and it doesn't have a flaw of your choice because um, I'm not really hung up on any additional tags for it. So I'm not going to pick that one. That's perfect. So just adding those two and getting rid of the complications, essentially. <laughs> Yep, and then I will actually still spend the treasure that I have while we're here. I want to buy a cuirass. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, it's only half a treasure. It's <laughs> going to be very small. <laughs> so this week goes on, and once we get to the last couple of days before you're about to leave, you all actually see some ships coming into the city and talking with you know any of the townspeople. It seems obvious that the uh, the sort of patrol that Dr. White had set up, you know, his skeletal ships to destroy anything coming in and take their people or take their ships, etc. They're not out patrolling, so people are finally just naturally coming back to Plankton, not having any idea that anything was ever wrong, you know, people that may not have been around for a while. Um, so the, the city's starting to fill up in that last day or so with people ready to help out, or even a few people that are like, oh, fuck that, and just take off. I thought you were going to say that the patrols he sent out are coming back now <laughs> for new orders. Nope, nope. It seems, uh, you know, all the skeletons he was controlling are just chilling now. So there's probably just a bunch of ships out there floating, yeah. not doing a damn thing. People are coming into town towing ships behind their <laughs> ships. They're like, we just found this. <laughs> um, is there anything else anyone is doing before you load up and ship out? Yeah, before we leave, uh, I would like to go have a conversation with Siobhan. Okay. I think I head over to her her ship um, and just kind of poke my head in and kind of be like, "Hey, uh, I think I think we're getting ready to head out uh, soon, but I wanted to talk with you if you have a second. Oh, I of course. What can I do for you? Uh, well, I'm I'm working on this this book, and you know the the books here in this world they've got the ability to like let you use certain magics, and so I'm I'm trying to really like tap into that ability um, and and write one and i wanted to just kind of talk with you about it i uh, all right what um what exactly do you have in mind well th the idea is it would be kind of this uh this abc book you know like like you would have for kids to to teach them the alphabet uh but it'd be like like pirate themed um 
and being able to to read it would kind of give you a, a fundamental understanding of whatever it is you're trying to learn, uh, kind of understand the basics, so to speak, and point you in the right direction. Um, and I just feel like you you would be a good person to to kind of look over this with me and see if you think that this is a good idea and if there's any particular direction I should take. Sorry, I I don't know what your relationship with this world's Megan is like. Um, but in my world, you you and I were were very close, and I was I was lost, and you found me, and you took me in. Um, and sorry, I say you, but she. I I realize it's not it's not the same. You're not you're not her. Um, she's not around anymore, and it's it's really good to see you. And uh, you helped me find my direction last time, and I was just wondering if you could do it again. And help me know that I'm on the right track. She sits back in her chair considering your words. I don't think this is a regular move, but it's important. It seems like you're trying to check off one of your quests for the book, correct? Yeah. uh, One of them is get someone from this world to give this book their blessing. And I feel like meeting this Siobhan, as of right now, at the very least, this is the only blessing I care about. All right. Give me a roll plus polish. And you are welcome to spend luck or any of the usual things on that. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to spend 2 points of luck. Okay. 11. <laughs> Yay! She smiles at you. It is odd. You are so much like her. Conversations even exactly like this. Frankly, where she would ask for advice about something that I don't know shit about. My opinion didn't matter, she just wanted it, and I always thought that was very sweet. For what it's worth, I think it's a good idea, the thing that you're making. There's a lot of people that need guidance, and her opinion is something I always valued very much, her insight. So I'll tell you what I often told her. Use your judgment and do your own thing, and I'm sure it'll turn out great. Okay, I will. Thank you. She stands and offers a hug. Oh, I take it immediately. (laughs) It's a hell of a little team you've got there. Yeah, they're, they're pretty good. So are you. I wish you could have met Artas. He's really good, too. It's very nice to hear. Thank you for that. So, at the end of this downtime, before you are heading out on your new ship, you can choose to either heal all harm or get rid of a trouble. And congratulations, because you've done a couple of things here. You are at Renown 2. Look at us! With your ship, because you have uh, both completed a bounty or job. The job was, you know, deal with the circle. You have done so. And while most of it was informational, you have certainly stolen the treasure of all the information you need and even some items to help track down what you have to deal with next. Yeah, it's unfortunate that we're leaving our much more known ship here. That might be good, depending on where we're going. (laughs) We're gaining renown because we're getting a better ship. Just paint another (laughs) bullseye on Plankton. (laughs) We can can move our our poor burnt goose over to this one. I was just going to say, can we take our dilapidated goose and just paste it to the front of the new one? That's the part that draws the, yeah, fair. Yeah, there we go. The goose is renowned, the ship. mm. Yeah, I mean, it's essentially just the hood ornament on the car. (laughs) I mean, it's fine. So- We are going to do the Renown move here. We had kind of considered it for the first one, but nobody knew you were in the world yet. Now you've certainly made some waves. Hey. All right. Waves. So when your crew finishes a downtime spent in a public place with Renown of one or more, one of the crew gets to roll a D6. So let's start. Let's have somebody roll first, and then we'll say what happens. Who's doing it? Dibs. Three. All right. Nothing happens. Oh. What would have happened? Yeah. What, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's one of these things that I think is really neat. This is a cool mechanic because if you roll at or lower than what your current renown is, a couple of things happen. One good, one bad. And if you roll above it, you just have avoided all notice, which could be good. Hmm. So if you had rolled a two or a one, um, then you pick one boon and one unwanted attention. So the boons are, uh, you have a new follower. They're loyal and inspired as tags with an additional tag of my choice, and uh, they will do whatever you ask of them. Or you can pick, you've learned of a new treasure, and I would mark it on the map, and you may take one more unwanted attention to mark it yourself. Ooh. Or you've impressed someone important and you get a letter from them or a scene with them and pick a crewmate who gains a bond with them. Oh, nice. 
And then you also pick an unwanted attention. A bounty hunter shows up right now. Prepare for a fight. A powerful enemy knows you're here. You'll have to run. Or you're cursed by mysterious forces, and I will tell you how to free yourself from that. Um, so that's yeah, that's what happens. You get one good thing, one bad thing, uh, as sort of flavor when you hit your renown. But otherwise, you're still flying under the radar, and just you know, you kind of break even. Also, for anybody unaware, the gamble downtime move also lets you pick renown boons for yourself. Oh. Also, for anyone keeping track, uh, after this downtime, we have officially been in this world for a month. Yikes. That's almost longer than the whole rest of the story's been. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the entire entirety of coin has taken place in less than a month. Less than a month with three Halloweens yeah, and a couple here. of Christmases. Yeah. That might be longer than I've been in main coin timeline because <laughs> yeah. I was there for like a week and then we dipped a star hold and then we were there for like another week. Yeah, that's yeah. true. This is your home now. You're more <laughs> used to this place. Dude. Yeah. I hope that in the future, once we are back in our world or whatever, that you keep referring to things that happened here like you've forgotten that they weren't like, you're like, no, because you like this because you're a monkey. No, I'm sorry. I'm I'm confused. I, <laughs> I was thinking of the pirate world where I spent most of my time. <laughs> That's my bad. Where where do we keep the pee bucket in the... <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa Tincher's like, left corner. <laughs> <laughs> We're driving in the car and she's like, this technology is amazing. <laughs> she's used to being in the future, but she's just become more accustomed to living in <laughs> a ship. Do you need me to raise the sails? There are no sails. That's great. <laughs> I'm definitely taking the leather pants home with me. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. So it comes time to leave as Jeffrey and Edwin have gotten your new ship ready to go. We can have multiple people do some roles here that we're going to stat out this ship, and oh. it's oh. going to be random. Oh, shit. So one thing we will roll for sure, and another thing I'll leave it up to you. The first thing is, how many cannons does this ship have? This is going to be the kind of overall size of this ship. So whoever wants to make this roll, roll 1d6. Ugh. A 1 and a 2 mean that you have one cannon on either side, so two total. A 3 and a 4 means 2 and 2, and a 5 and a 6 means that you have 3 and 3. I was hoping potential. we had to roll 2d6, and that's how many cannons there are on this show. Oh, my oh, God. Side, like, yeah. yeah, like 2d12, that's how many cannons there <laughs> Oh, my God. We have one on one side and six on the other. <laughs> and we all have to stand. <laughs> we all have to stand on the side with one to balance the weight with our bodies. Uh, who's who's making the cannon roll? I feel like that should be Landara. Oh, okay. No pressure. Five. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Six cannons. Five on one side, one on the other. <laughs> We use it to make super sharp turns. Fire it and just immediately rotate 90 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> the other ship would never expect that. I'm just saying. Oh, my God. Unless they've seen the, the A-Team movie, and then they would definitely expect that. <laughs> uh, so, for the stats for your ship, you can either do a neutral pick here, and I'll let you pick where you put the stats, so you can have a plus one, a zero, and a negative one. Or you can roll another D6. A middle result will keep you right there, that, that neutral kind of stat block. Uh, a bad roll will make it not negatives all the way across the board, but slightly worse. A five and a six will give you all positive numbers on your stats. I think that sounds fun. Let's roll. Yeah, the chance sounds way more fun. Yeah, especially since they cobbled the ship together. Yeah. yeah. They apparently just slapped a bunch of cannons on it. <laughs> we gave you every cannon we have left. <laughs> We're completely defenseless. Please don't let us down. <laughs> All right, who's making this roll? Uh, I'll do it. All right, let's see it. One. Oh, oh. no. Da -da 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 -da. At least we got all those guns. Yep. For when uh, we're inevitably caught. <laughs> I will let you pick. It It isn't as bad. It's not negative ones across the board. You get one zero and two negative ones. So you get to decide where the zero goes. I feel like we need to be the least concerned with fortune. Yeah. So we're just trying to get across. So do we want better, a very relative term in this case, <laughs> steadfast or speed? I feel like speed might be more important. Also, narratively since this is a cobbled together ship it makes sense to me that we have a negative steadfast yeah, yeah. it's not all tanked out yeah no yeah they're just like we just need to get you there as fast as possible i mean especially because that's kind of like what we were prioritizing is doing kind of like a rush job so we could leave sooner very much feels like the ship is going to fall apart as we <laughs> get to the new <laughs> island they're like it's not fast 
But that's the thing it's the least bad at. <laughs> yeah. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not fast. But what it lacks in speed, it lacks even further in both teams. <laughs> 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 All right. I, I like this, how speedy, not really speedy it is, because the name of this ship is the White Rabbit. Ooh. Hmm. It's going to disappear. <laughs> <laughs> and probably a puff of smoke. <laughs> oh, no. So- who wants to roll the navigate to get you the two weeks across to Whistler's Cove? Uh, I would like to. And Tass, I, I don't know if this is another roll or a navigate or if this will just give me a bonus for the navigate. Uh, because I think since we are going to a place that I have seen in my vision and going to a place where the other Kim of this world maybe died... I think this is invoking my star-touched oddity. Oh, yeah. Okay. Which is, when you are lost and don't know which way to turn, look to the stars and roll plus Spitfire. On a hit, the stars will tell you where to go. So I don't know if I'm rolling star-touched instead of navigate, or if it's navigate with a bonus because I'm star-touched and tied to that place, or... Um, what does star-touched have, like, picks and, like, things that happen on a fail and that kind of thing? So uh, you look to the stars and roll plus Spitfire. On a hit, the stars t will tell you where to go. On a seven to nine, the destination they send you to is dangerous, strange, or seemingly nonsensical. And on a miss, they will tell you something true, but you will not want to hear it. I think let's go with that as opposed to navigate, because that actually still keeps us kind of adjacent to the navigate anyway. So I like sure. it. Okay. They're like, no matter what. She thinks that's where she's leading us, even if it's a mixed success and it's someplace else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is important. I'm going to go ahead and uh, spend two points of luck on this. Okay. Whew, I'm glad I did, because that's a seven. Do me a favor, Kim. Mm-hmm. I have some selections in my head, one for even, one for odd. Will you <laughs> okay. please roll 1d6 for me? Sure. Even. Okay, so what does this look like when you use this? Like, does this, how does this manifest for you? Boy, it's, I think it's echoing the ability that I naturally have of being in tune with various dimensional versions of myself and trying to just filter out all of the other Kims that aren't this one even though I don't know if she still exists in this world. So it's trying to sort of like read old magical energy, like impressions of where I think she might have been. Okay. So you all get moving. Cotton and Siobhan, Jara, and the rest have come to see you all off, offer you words of, of advice and hope and wisdom. Cotton assures you that if you need anything else from him, he sets you up with some birds so that you can send back word this way, and they assure you it will maybe even be slightly shorter than the full two weeks before your other ship will be ready when you need to call it to you. Nice. You all get moving, and over the course of a couple of days, Kim, this feeling just seems to draw you a certain way. I think there's even this portion of your mind, like just tickling at the back of your mind, that there's a sense of this isn't exactly the course to Whistler's Cove, but that's okay. There's this need that's driving you to just go off course just a little bit. And it's only after maybe four days that ahead of you, it's odd because all of the sailors that do this all the time, they seem anxious, they seem confused, because ahead there is darkness like a storm. But the water isn't particularly choppy. The oceans are not moving with the wind of what seems to be the storm ahead. After about another half day moving towards it, it's getting bigger and bigger, and they also comment that the storm isn't moving. It's completely still and even smaller than they would have guessed. It's localized around this certain area. Kim, this feeling washes over you. You know that you need to get closer, that there's something that you need to see. You hear a voice that sounds very much like your own, whispering, free them, free them. Jeffrey is sliding down from the crow's nest with a um, spyglass. It's the damnedest thing up there. That storm, it ain't moving. I can't quite tell. It seems like there might be some sort of 
island at the centre of it. We have to go there. Are you certain about that? Yeah, I, I got a, a message or an impression from me saying that we had to free them. I thought you said you saw the you of this world get killed. I saw the moments before I assume she got killed. She might be dead. And if she's dead, then that means that this was the last thing that she was thinking. Or maybe when I was connecting with her and, and seeing her life, she saw mine. And I don't know. But if she's dead and if this is what she wanted and if there are people there that might also be killed or trapped or something, we have to save them. We have to free them. I mean, we already know that in this world, dead doesn't mean gone. Based on where we know we were headed with the coordinates, is this kind of seem like the general direction of where we're supposed to be going? Or is this like obviously off course? I don't think you need to roll here. I think you have the tools. And now that, you know, Kim is opening up about this where it's less of a compulsion and more of, you know, this awareness of, of how she's directed the ship. When you get out the maps and just the amount of time that you've traveled, it seems pretty obvious that this is the point at the center of the triangle. The Crit Show is a Crit Show Studios production, edited and produced by Brandon Wentz with music by Jake Purley. You can find more information about us at thecritshowpodcast.com. To keep up to date with upcoming live shows, contests, and other special events, follow us at The Crit Show on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For even more weekly content, join us at patreon.com slash thecritshow. <laughs>